Hi friends, I'm Shauna. Welcome to the channel and welcome to a new video. Today we are diving in deep to a aspect or topic in the health and wellness industry. It's going to be juicy. It's going to be spicy. We are going to get into it immediately. Like we're just going to jump right in, but I really want to give a trigger warning first for discussions of diet culture and weight loss. If those topics bother you in any capacity, it's cool if this one is not for you. Like click out, take care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next one. I need to give you some context for this video. We're getting into it now. I started getting ads for this brand called AG1 a couple weeks ago. AG1 stands for like athletic greens and they're super green type of product. This specific brand of super greens, they're aesthetic, okay? They are very aesthetic just in terms of like their Instagram feed, their color choices, their branding, but also the product itself, the little shaker bottle. And then you have like the little scoop in the little jar that's like super cute. I mean, the bottle is really cute in particular, but they also kind of fit into this category health and wellness that is very aestheticized, you know, like the morning routine, matcha latte, wake up early, journaling kind of vibe. Even if you don't like that stuff, like, Feel like you know you can picture it and then i started getting ads like this ready to start a healthier routine the daily have you'll actually stick with this triggered me at a baseline level because i'm a habit girl we talk about habits all the time i've been talking about habits on this channel since at least 2021 i think it was the third time i saw the ad i clicked on it and ag1 was selling for 79 dollars. 79 dollars for a 30-day supply usd by the way became very apparent to me that what I was interested in was this lifestyle marketing and not actually the product itself. I had no information on the product except a vague idea of what a super green is, a cute product, and some like vague claims about a habit. Like that's all I really knew, but I still clicked on it and was still interested in wanting to buy. This video is going to be a deep dive from the marketing aspect of these things, like actually show you ads from this brand in a similar bl brand called Bloom. I want to talk about the concept of lifestyle marketing. I want to talk about the absolute shitty toxic nature of the health and wellness industry or how it can be shitty and toxic. Like not all aspects of it are actually gross. Also link it to diet culture and then also talk about the claims products like AG1 and Bloom make. So we're talking about a lot and I do, I will be mentioning both AG1 and Bloom because Bloom is actually the number one selling supplement at Target and Amazon. They are by far the most popular. AG1 and Bloom aren't marketed in the same way. So I think it's going to be interesting to compare them to each other. And yeah, we're going to look at what the science says about the, these products and these classes of products and all of their unbacked and unsubstantiated claims. We're also going to talk about influencer sponsorships in this category of product. Here is the TLDR of these products, okay? They're overpriced, unregulated lifestyle products that are problematic because they have, for what I've just mentioned, but also their ties to diet culture, some more explicitly than others. And uh, they really venerate this thin standard of health. Or that, you know, thin is the standard of health. Like to be healthy means to be thin, not it. I think you can know where this video is heading. We're not going to be giving anything a glowing review. And I think what would be potentially an interesting topic to talk about more so down the road would be the intersection between finances and health and wellness not this video, but I feel like there's a little bit of that involved here. Because I don't want to get sued, let me be clear, all of these opinions are my own, and I am also not a doctor. So when we talk about the health claims later on, I will be referring to medical studies and showing you direct quotes from medical studies instead of saying, like, this thing is a fact. I just want to make it very clear that I am not a doctor and I'm not attempting to provide anybody with health or medical advice. Now let's talk about the concept or product category with super green before we get into talking about these products at all. Because if you're not familiar with the super green, or maybe you've heard about it or seen these videos like on TikTok or you've seen ads for them, I think it would be good for all of us to get on the same page. 
So a super green is not actually a medical term for anything. It's just a product category that has been given a name that is favorable to it. Um, like a superfood, you know what I mean? So it's just an industry created term to refer to a class of plant-based products. Super greens are nutrient dense green plants and vegetables like spirulina and wheatgrass. It's my understanding that this term was originally applied to like a very specific group of plants with a very specific group of nutrients that was kind of later kind of expanded to include kind of like all green vegetables like spinach and broccoli. Um, super greens are like called super because of their health benefits and they're rich in vitamins like A, K, C, E, and other good stuff. So super greens function like a vitamin. You use them as a supplement and there actually is crossover between a vitamin supplement and a super green. Both contain similar nutrients. They wouldn't necessarily contain all of the same nutrients, but there will be a really big crossover. And so on many of the labels of these products, they do mention like vitamin use and there's like the discontinue one usually. From my research, it seems like the major risks of these supplements would be getting too much of a nutrients. Many of the supplements out there, including both of these, have more than 100% of the recommended daily value, which could potentially do negative things if you are taking specific medications so there could be negative interactions or if you have other health conditions. Some of these products like AG1 and Bloom contain pre and probiotics and they also may claim to have something called phytonutrients. Phytonutrients are kind of a cop-out because okay, here's an exact definition of a phytonutrient. Plant foods contain thousands of natural chemicals. They are called phytonutrients or phytochemicals. These chemicals help protect plants from germs, fungi, bugs, and other threats. I say it's a cop-out because if you eat plants, you eat phytonutrients. That's my understanding anyways. There have been highly specific phytonutrients that have been studied, but it's impossible to know how a brand uses phytonutrients unless they disclose which ones they're claiming to have in a product. Okay, lastly, there are prebiotics and probiotics. A prebiotic, prebiotics are a combination of live beneficial bacteria and or yeast that naturally live in your body. Prebiotics are made up of good bacteria that help keep your body healthy and working well. The good bacteria help you in many ways, including finding out, fighting off bad bacteria when you have too much of it and helping you feel better. This balancing act is naturally happening in your body all the time. You don't actually need to take probiotic supplements to make it happen. Good bacteria is just a natural part of your body. Eating a well-balanced diet rich in fiber every day helps keep the number of good bacteria at proper levels. Prebiotics are a specialized plant fiber that acts like fertilizers to stimulate the growth of healthy bacteria in the gut. We will get into the science stuff later. Now let's get into the marketing. Let's take a look at AG1's website before we turn to their ads. The first page of the website, when you enter on, says the foundation of daily health, and then there are images of people that cycle through. The images are mostly women. I counted two men featured in two, and six women, and they're portraying a variety of healthy, active lifestyle. That's the kind of image that they're trying to evoke. I'm glad we have a diverse range of people here in terms of age and skin color, but my biggest problem here is that AG1 is associating health and a healthy, active lifestyle with slimness. AG1 is not claiming for their product to be a weight loss supplement, weight loss product, meal replacer, none of that. But they are, by calling it athletic greens, they are associating their product with athleticism and as well with in the health and wellness industry too, AG1 is doing that more so than Bloom. You know, AG1 has that like active lifestyle component tied to it more closely, whereas Bloom has more of the health and wellness kind of tie to it. Do you like to get a little of the distinction I'm trying to make here? There is a long standing problem with the health and wellness industry that promoting the idea that to be healthy, to be well, to be physically active, 
to be healthy almost period, you have to be thin. It's kind of mind boggling here that to be fat somehow means that you can't have an active lifestyle or be healthy. When a brand uses lifestyle marketing to sell a product, they're selling you a concept or an idea. They're selling you like the concept of health. They're selling you aesthetics. You know, they're selling you habits and routines. They're selling you becoming a healthier person. When you do that, to the exclusion of an entire group of people, you are saying that those people aren't and can't be those things. When we call a brand aesthetic, like AG1 or Bloom, or when we create aesthetic imagery associated with a brand or trying to build an aesthetic to the brand, when we do that, again, to the exclusion of an entire group of people, we are saying that this group of people, they're not aesthetic. I went through like the entirety of AG1's Instagram feed and like nowhere are fat people to be found. There is one person who um, has been using some of their ads and on her own bio, like it says curves ahead and she's like calling herself a curvy person. Uh, This would be the only exception to their entire Instagram feed. Bloom is very similar. AG, we're going to talk about Bloom now for a second, and then we're going to circle back to fat phobia in a more explicit way. AG1 just sells one product, the Super Green. Bloom sells the Super Green, but also other supplements. They sell protein powder. They sell pre-workout. They sell collagen. Their website has a cycle. Like when you go onto their website, they also have a cycle of photos, but theirs are more real life customers. It has a very Gen Z look to it. Bloom stands out in a much more negative way because of their association of their product with bloating. They mention this across their platform. It's on their packaging. It's mentioned on their reviews. It's mentioned like several times on the product page. Their bottom, like their call to action at the bottom of the page is join the bloat free fam. So it says elsewhere as well, viral on TikTok for its ability to soothe uncomfortable. Excuse me? I'm going to link an article that's titled, can we stop pathologizing minor bloating, please? The article discusses how bloating is part of a digestion process. We literally need to bloat to digest our food. Are we really so afraid of being fat that we're pathologizing normal digestion? Okay, here's some quotes on the article. In the last decade, he's seen an increase in patients who've come into the office complaining of bloating. Patients who most of the time don't have other symptoms that would indicate anything besides normal digestion. It seems that a healthy gut is equated with a washboard flat abdomen, implying that if your stomach isn't, you're bloated and you need to do something to fix that. Seeing bloating as undesirable further perpetuates the idea that fatness or bigness is inherently bad. A company like Bloom, in my opinion, is predatory because they are preying on a common anxiety and perpetuating fat phobia. I also want to touch on something from their website. When you go into the about section for the company, here's what it says. At 250 pounds, Mary hit rock bottom, both mentally and physically. She decided to take ownership of her health. And with the help of her now husband, Greg, she was able to lose 90 pounds and finally love herself. Fitness helped Mary bloom into her best self. And she was inspired to help other women do the same. Congratulations to her for losing the weight. I'm glad she feels great about that. However, you don't need super greens and pre-workout to lose weight. I first just want to have that conversation. Losing weight is diet and exercise. If you change nothing about your diet and exercise and just started taking super greens, nothing would really change. Like I just first want to say that if you have a goal of losing weight, you don't need super greens to do that. You can do it a hundred percent diet and exercise. Like that's the way to do it. And there's, there's a whole other conversation to be had about about diet supplements and like diet pills and often how most of them don't work. And overall as well, this product is not claiming to be a weight loss product either. So it's a little suspicious in my opinion to kind of make that 
association in people's minds. Number one, this also feels fat phobic because it implies that this person was only able to love herself once she lost weight. Let me be very clear about this. You are a lovable person. You are worthy. You are deserving of love and happiness at any size, period, end of discussion. Your size has nothing to do with your lovability or worthiness. You know, fat phobia in the diet industry is a, a greater conversation that can be had at another time. And I would love to continue that conversation, but I feel like that's good. Like we're going to leave it there for now. When we look at their Instagram feeds, they do have different aesthetics. I feel like Blooms is much more Gen Z kind of TikTok aesthetic. AG1 feels um, for a slightly older demographic, like maybe solidly millennial. They do give tips and habits, which Bloom doesn't really do. Bloom has like what I eat in a day videos. They kind of bother me because they, in my opinion, further entrench their brand in diet culture. In my teens and early 20s, I wanted to be thin and that was everything to me. My value hinged on thinness to, to a large part. So I am very well versed in the what I eat in a day like videos. When I see a rice cake in any video, the the majority of people who are eating rice cakes are doing it for a healthy snack, like a weight loss snack, even if you aren't saying how to lose weight. I think it's part of the way that brands like Bloom aestheticize slimness and aestheticize and even like romanticize weight loss, weight loss culture, diet culture. And when you aestheticize something and romanticize something, you make it seem more desirable than it probably is. We don't need to live our entire lives in diet culture and always having our diets and our weights on our minds. Like there are better things we could be doing with our time and our energy. Now let's get into experiential marketing in greater detail. Experiential marketing is so powerful because a company is selling you on an idea or a concept or a lifestyle rather than the product itself. So in our example, we're talking about super greens. The way a brand sells you the lifestyle is by promoting the morning routine. It's by promoting kind of more general concepts of health and wellness and aestheticize it. Gym girly vibes, morning routine, it girl vibes. They also might even sell this through a self-love rhetoric as in like make time for yourself and what matters you know like you matter like prioritize yourself visuals are a key way for a brand to sell you on this concept or on a lifestyle they could they could sell you the lifestyle without ever saying anything to you just by presenting you images of a slow and simple morning uh, green smooth green smoothies are like the symbol I feel like of health and wellness and that entire industry and like the eight girl lifestyle. These brands produce this exact product. When we show images of like a bathtub and like cute skincare and somebody somebody's journal and somebody's white bed linens, we create associations in people's mind that this thing equals this life. This is the way to have a more aesthetic life. This is the way to be a healthier person. The reason why this is so effective can be summed up by this quote. Creating a lifestyle brand is about defining who or what your customer wants to become in the future and giving them the solution that will help them to achieve that end goal. It's not about designing the perfect running shoe, but convincing your audience that your company will make them a better runner. Lifestyle marketing is so powerful because you do not have to convince somebody that your product is good. You have to convince somebody of the goal that they want to achieve. You find out who they want to be, what their deepest desires are, and then you exploit it. So the easiest way to get them 
to get you to buy AG1 or Bloom is to sell you on the aesthetics and the lifestyle and to create associations in your mind of results that you will get from this product. And you can say, sure, they never said anything in AG1. You can say, we never said anything. We never told you this is going to happen. But like, the, they're, they're, they're laying the foundation. AG1's uh, powerfully simple daily habit is another great example of this. They're selling you on a daily habit and a daily routine. This is not the product. They are not a habit system. They are not a habit tracker. And here's, here's the thing. Because you don't already have the habit of taking this product, there is no guarantee that you will actually <laughs> develop the habit just by buying the product. Like you, you actually have to do so much work in order to develop something as a habit. So there's a good chance you could buy this thing and then use it a handful of times and then never finish it. Or, you know, instead of having this thing taking every morning for 30 days, it ends up taking you four months to finish it because you're so inconsistent. The only thing that's actually going to develop the habit is you, the work that you're going to do, that you have to do. Bloom, AG1, none of those things are going to do the work for you. They don't set your alarm in the morning. They don't put it in a note in your journal. They don't set the product in easy space. They don't create cues in your environment. Like you have to set all of that up yourself. And owning the product is not a guarantee you have implementation, success, or results. Lastly, Bloom has a lot of social proof. The reviews are truly great. They're the number one seller on Amazon and Target. They're making waves on TikTok. Like they have literally thousands of reviews. This can be the thing that pushes you over the edge. We were talking about FOMO last week. And I feel like it could go something like this. You see this lifestyle in your mind that you want for yourself. You see all of these, all of this social proof. And then you say, well, all of these people can't be wrong. I'm not saying that you are bound to fail because you want to start a new super green habit. No, these things just don't have the lasting effect that you think that they will. A lot of these habits are short lived because one, there are a lot of work that you don't want to maintain. Two, you don't see the results that you want. Three, they're expensive. If you would like to buy this, buy this product, Develop the habit first. And there are ways to develop the habit first. What if you woke up every morning and you drank a glass of water first? It would kind of simulate the super green habit. Or maybe not in the morning if you want, don't want to take it then. But you know what I mean? Have you drink a glass of water habit in its place and see how long you can keep that up? Or maybe you start making a smoothie every morning Or let's say you want to take it three times a week and every morning, you start making your smoothie three times uh, a week. And then eventually once that's the habit, then you get your, your super greens and you can put them in your smoothie. I'm not trying to be a total hater here, especially if you're somebody who would see value in these products. Um, Those are some legitimate suggestions for developing a habit. Listen, if you spend your money on this, I would want it to work out for you truly. So Those are my tips for hopefully having it work out. The bottom line is that a green powder will not transform your life. Your house will not be different. Your bedroom will not be different. You will not be different. Change comes from you, not a product. These marketing campaigns are designed to be powerful. And if you have never run a Facebook ad, a Google ad, or I should say a meta ad, not Facebook, meta ad or Google ad, I don't think you can appreciate just how specific and targeted an ad can be. First of all, these brands have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to spend on advertising. I am a marketer in real estate and um, I I do some work on both Meta and Google ads. That is just a full disclosure. Companies like AG1 and Bloom don't just run one ad. They run multiple ads to different subsets or different segments of their target audience. And they can subset in different ways. And they can also do something called A-B testing, where you test like different iterations of an ad with like within a certain subset. So they have done a lot to figure out 
what ads work best for their target demo and then target their demographics in very specific ways. They probably have ads for people who are looking to lose weight. They probably have a separate ad for like the gym girly. You can also filter like a little bit by wealth. Um, so they probably have that demographic selected as well. They obviously have age and geography and gender selected too, but just how specific ads can be in meta. You can add the self-love psychology or like the psychology of self-love, that concept of relief. You can add that in as a target for your demographic. There's also some like competitor analysis that can happen. You can also select like if somebody is interested in this product, recommend mine. Or, you know, people are interested in this website, that can also be part of the target too. So these brands know so much about you and have done a lot of work in creating the perfect ad to target you. Now let's talk about sponsorships in relationship to lifestyle products such as these. In my opinion, it is very different to take a sponsorship for a nail polish, a kitchen, a piece of kitchen equipment, for a purse, for an earring, for clothes. All of these have opportunities to be shitty. The brands can be shitty. The product quality can be shitty. The claims can be shitty. Like there's room for shittiness everywhere, okay? Taking a sponsorship for a health supplement or a diet supplement just feels gross to me because influencers, unless you literally have a medical degree or you're a registered dietitian, which is a protected title in Canada and the United States and many countries around the world as well, Unless you have those qualifications, you are unqualified to promote a supplement. I am unqualified to talk about supplements. I acknowledge that. But I'm also not making money from a company. I have no vested interest in whether you buy the supplement or not. I have no vested interest in whether you like this video or not. I mean, I feel like this video is important to make. But if you don't like it, like nothing happens. I'm going to play you this ad before we talk more about this. Hold on. Drinking AG1 by Athletic Greens has been such a staple for me lately. My digestion is amazing. My mental clarity and my ability to focus has drastically improved. And it also tastes really good. I think it tastes a little bit like pineapple and vanilla mixed together. I've gotten so many of my friends hooked on this. And they've been really reluctant to try it because they think it's going to taste really bad, but then they try it and they're pleasantly surprised. Use my code and you'll get five free travel packs and a year supply of vitamin D drops for free with your first purchase. As I mentioned earlier, the symbol for the wellness industry, in my opinion, is like the green juice green smoothie. The fact that this product exists at all is a real testament to the industry's interest in selling us the idea, like just the concept of health and that we should optimize ourselves as much as possible. Everyone could be like just a little healthier with their green juice. This is exactly what's being sold in this ad. You have a conventionally beautiful woman and she's making generic claims that this product, you know, improved her digestion and mental clarity. The science behind the product is irrelevant if it's being sold through these ways. And I think this is the company's attempt, like their workaround through having influencers if like use the product for influence. I think a lot of people would be suspicious of other people who are saying like, oh my gosh, it, it does this, 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 and this. Like, are you a doctor now? So if they're making like, oh my God, like I'm feeling healthier, like I'm feeling more energetic, those are claims like other people can't refute. And I think the claims are general enough that people often want to be healthier or more energetic. And that's more of a universal interest than whatever like specific health claims that like vitamin K does. I just feel so strongly about this because you can seriously screw up your body. If you take some random person's advice on the internet, for like what to eat and like what supplements to take. And this is a lifestyle marketing tactic playing up before eyes as well. If you want a lifestyle like hers, if you want to look like her, if you want to be like her, take this supplement. And there's also 
associations between what she looks like and the supplement. First of all, are you even unhealthy? Like, what does that mean? And are you lacking vitamins? Are you lacking minerals? Are you lacking nutrients? Are you lacking fiber? Uh, are you lacking protein? You know how you would find that out? You go take a blood test. This article from Refinery29, I have, I have to share this with you. As Siren Kale writes for The Guardian, wellness has consistently been structured around three tenets, robust individualism, distrust of Western medicine, and a commitment to self-optimization. In practice, the hyper-focus of the self results in messaging that subtly promises to eliminate insecurities without cha- without challenging their basis, enabling fat phobia, and exacting beauty standards. It also centers all power to do away with struggle and disease on your own willpower, disregarding the wealth of external and biological factors that are crucial in determining people's health. Why would you buy the solution unless you'd already bought into the idea that you have a problem? The wellness industry can be predatory when it sells you this generic idea of being healthier because you can always chase being better. It's this hamster wheel that you could be on. Like you could truly never be healthy. Like you could always be healthier because the healthcare system in America is wild. Both of these companies are American, largely targeting an American demographic. I understand people turning to alternative products instead of going to the doctor. I can say all I want here, go to the doctor to run a blood test for you. If you don't have money for it, I get it. I get why you wouldn't. So people are up to their own, like are left to their own devices to figure out solutions. And then you see a product like AG1, or you see a product like Bloom, and you want to try it out because you're experiencing health effects and you want to take the solution into your own hands. The marketing for health products is, is especially problematic when we are charging high price points and that acts as a gatekeeper for health. For a 30 day supply of AG1, it's $79. If that's USD. And then for Bloom, it's $56. For a one year supply of AG1, it's $948. And for Bloom, it's $672. That is outrageous, in my opinion, for what are glorified vitamins. In addition, the premium pricing for these products is like a little infuriating because vitamins, which this is a class of vitamin in essence, are redundant if you already have a healthy diet. This is according to the studies. Okay. And I will, I will get into direct quotes about this in just a second. If you are eating a healthy balanced diet, then you, you don't need supplements because what are you supplementing? The people who have access to healthy foods in order to have a robust diet are wealthy people, people who could afford these products. So in theory, if you are already a relatively healthy person, you don't need a supplement. The people who would potentially need a supplement more would be people who have less access to healthy foods and a healthy diet, but they are completely priced out of this product. People. So our target demographic are people who already care about health and wellness, who are likely to be healthy or fairly healthy to begin with. And then we're giving them more of what they already have. In my opinion, you would be better off adding $50 to a monthly grocery budget than buying this stuff. Because that way, instead of getting it through supplementation, you get the vitamins and minerals through the actual source. It's going even further here. Some of the best sources of nutrients from fruits and vegetables are f- from frozen fruits and vegetables because they retain their, um, they retain their nutrients because they're like flash, flash frozen, frozen hours after being picked. So they're able to maintain those nutrients instead of having something in your fridge that could potentially be there for a week. And you're not actually sure how much of the nutrient that you're getting a bag of frozen carrots is not sexy. It's not in the same way. Like aesthetic carrots aren't aestheticized, or corn isn't aestheticized, or your broccoli is not aestheticized in the same way as these health and wellness supplements. 